City in the Sky is one of the biggest and most ambiguous dungeons in terms of origin. It is a huge dungeon that is made up of buildings that are connected to each other. It is really mysterious when you think about it, who built it and how. Now, as a dungeon, it delivers what you expect from a dungeon. There are a lot of challenging and creative puzzles that require you to use or to avoid the wind. You get an extra car shot in this dungeon, which makes this dungeon so much fun to explore. The atmosphere is amazing since, it's, since it takes place outside where you can see the sky. At the end of this dungeon, you fight an armored dragon that uh, threatened the city. It is an amazing battle and a great way to end the dungeon. Time shift stones are first introduced in a dungeon in the Renero mining facility. Going through time via the stones is a creative gimmick that makes up a lot of challenging and creative puzzles. There are a lot of traps in this dungeon, such as conveyor belts with obstacles on them, paths hidden under quicksand, spikes and more. This dungeon also introduces a lot of powerful enemies, such as the Bemos and Armos. My major issue with this dungeon is that there is no mini boss. Other than that, the dungeon is great overall. For a second dungeon, Snowhead Temple is difficult. This dungeon has a gimmick, which is to raise a pillar in the central room. This, this encourages you to map out the dungeon in your head, since the pillar blocks certain paths which forces you to find alternative routes to rooms that you have already been to. Even after raising the pillar, you have to knock parts of it to reach the boss, adding to the main mechanic of the dungeon. Overall, this makes the dungeon complex and challenging. Another positive thing about this dungeon is that the golden mask is used to cross chasms and to push heavy switches. The fire arrow is also used to light torches and melt ice. At the end of the dungeon, you fight an amazing boss. The best part about tackling the Earth Temple is that Medley helps you on your way. Having Medley help you fly across chasms and using her instrument as a mirror shield makes up a lot of creative puzzles in this dungeon. This dungeon is filled with complicated light puzzles that require you to use both mirror shields to solve. This dungeon is also filled with a lot of spooky new enemies and traps. The boss was goofy looking but fun to fight. Another wind dungeon. By now, you should know that I love the wind element. The wind temple from Wind Waker is by far the hardest dungeon in the game. There are a lot of routes in this dungeon, which makes it non linear and complex. Many items are required for you to beat this dungeon, such as the iron boots, deck leaf, and the hookshot, which are the major ones. The puzzles are pretty fun to tackle and to solve by using the deck leaf and the hookshot. The temple also has a main room with the multiple paths from that room. At the bottom of the room, there is a huge fan that you use to reach multiple levels. Makara also gets kidnapped in this dungeon, which is a cool twist. At the end, you fight Mulgera, a fearsome boss with a decent battle. By far the most creative dungeon in the series, Great Bay Temple earned its place in this list. As a kid, I used to despise this dungeon. However, I started to enjoy the creativity of this dungeon as I played through it over and over. The main mechanic of this dungeon is the water current. You need to activate multiple pipes just to spin the water wheel the other way around and reverse the current. Another great aspect of this dungeon is that the ice arrows are used to solve many creative puzzles. You need them to freeze enemies and turn them into blocks, create your own path on the water, and freeze water seeping from the ceiling. Swimming as a Zor makes swimming fun instead of a chore. Gyorg was also improved significantly in the remake. My only complaint about this dungeon are the two mini bosses. Other than that, the dungeon does everything else right. The most well thought out and most beautiful fire dungeon is the fire sanctuary. The music and the atmosphere here are amazing. There are a lot of rooms that are open to the outside. The puzzles in this dungeon are pretty creative. Using the magma hand for your aid, the water plants, freeing the flow of magma to progress further and more. This dungeon requires you to use the majority of your arsenals to progress. It is filled with many mini bosses. The item of the dungeon gives you the ability to go underground, a new gimmick added to this dungeon. You even get to jump from a cliff to your doom, just to land on an invisible path. My biggest issues with this dungeon are the Grahim and the dungeon is very linear. Overall, the dungeon is amazing. An abandoned mansion filled with goats, skeletons, amputated hands, creative puzzles and more. It is not a surprise that this dungeon is great. The music is so eerie and fits the vibe really well. The dungeon is well designed and symmetrical. It is filled with unique puzzles such as the falling ceiling and the twisted corridors. 
Hunting down the four Power Sisters and beating them was fun and a great idea. Even the boss, Phantom Ganon, is a ghost, and he's really fun to battle. I have no idea why it is called the Forest Temple when it is an abandoned mansion filled with the dead. Shouldn't it be called the Ghost Temple or Shadow Temple? It doesn't fit the Forest theme at all. Also, you get the bow and arrow here, which is one of my favorite items. Another dungeon where the main gimmick is the time shift stone and the item is the bow and arrow. The sand ship is such a creative dungeon. A great thing about this dungeon is that it is an actual ship instead of a tower, mansion, tomb and so on. There is only one time shift stone in this dungeon, and the fact that there is only one makes this dungeon complex and very creative. You have to find a way to hit the time shift stone from different areas of the ship, either when you are outside on the ship or when you are inside through a grid. This dungeon also has a nice mini story. In short, a pirate stole the ship and you need to help the captain to defeat the pirate and save his crew. There are other great parts to this dungeon, such as climbing the mast, navigating the engine room, activating the engine room, and so on. Overall, this dungeon was so much fun with great puzzles, nice story, plot, fun mini boss, and much more. From the moment I stepped into this dungeon until the very end, I enjoyed every single moment of it. Stone Tower Temple has everything I could ask for from a dungeon. The music is fantastic, the atmosphere is amazing, the design of the dungeon is well done. The dungeon is filled with a variety of different puzzles that require you to use the majority of your weapons. It even requires you to use all of your transformation masks. It also has enemies that only appeared in this dungeon out of all the 3D games, the Igors and the Death Armors. It also has two amazing mini bosses, and the boss in the remake is phenomenal. I haven't even mentioned the best part of it, you get to flip the entire dungeon upside down, and you go through it again but now it is flipped. Plus, there are so many mysteries surrounding this dungeon that people have come up with multiple theories just to explain these mysteries. This dungeon is simply fantastic, and by far my favorite level in the Legend of Zelda series.